Dan Williams, Survive Outdoors. Today, what we're going to address are non venomous snake bites and some other critters. Um, the question is, is whether non venomous snakes can actually cause harm to us in the outdoors. Well, we're going to target that right now. So, non venomous snake bites. There are a ton of snake lovers out there. And as with any group that enjoys or loves their hobby or their interests, there is bias involved. I saw a bunch of YouTube videos that are big snake promoters and pet snakes and snake bites. Uh, they say don't cause any harm. Non-venomous snakes are no problem. That can be further from the truth. So they have something called confirmation bias. And when you do studies, you see selection bias. And that bias then skews the information. At Survive Outdoors, we're going to give you the truth and exactly the truth. I have no favor either direction. I don't sit there. I'm not a big snake lover. I'm not a snake hater. I know they're important to the outdoors and they're important to our ecosystem. So the non-venomous snakes, there's this large group called Colubrid, C-O-L-L-U-B-R-I-D. And there's about 250 snakes in that category. Um, corn snake, um, milk snake, black snake, there's a ton of snakes. The hognose snake, and then there's one out west called the wandering garter snake. They have something that's very unique. It's called, they have these Dvorny glands behind their eye, and then you'll see it in the picture. And there's a small, they have small fangs on either side. There are rear base fangs on the maxilla. So these snakes can bite, and when they do, very rare, this is really, hognose is a great snake. I've had a bunch of them as pets back when I was a youngster. And when they bite, they can inflict that bite with those fangs. Now these aren't fangs like a pit viper. They're not hollow. Um, they have a groove in the back of the fang that the saliva slash venom trickles down and can go into the wound. Now why do I say saliva slash venom? Big controversy in terms of your snake lovers are wanting to call this saliva mildly toxic. And what is the truth? Is it venom? Well, venom in a pit viper is actually modified saliva. So does the hog nose eastern and western have venom? Of course it does. It is very mildly toxic. It causes zero deaths. It never has killed anybody. But if it bites you and it inflicts those two fangs, you can get redness, blisters, um, some severe warmth, a very in, uh, infectious, what we call cellulitis. It gets really red and hot. So that's why I'm bringing this up. I want you to be aware that non-venomous snake bites can actually cause some harm. And even a corn snake or milk snake, the ones that feed on mice and rats. So the snake bite or any animal bite is the rate of infection is directly dependent on the diet of that animal. What do snakes eat? They eat rice, they eat rice. They eat mice and rats, and they also order Chinese food, especially those, you know, on the east or west coast. Rice, really, snakes? So anyway, these snakes eat mice and rats. They carry diseases, they have tons of bacteria. Uh, salmonella, staph, strep, uh, leptospirosis, all of these different organisms. So when the non-venomous snake, a boa that you feed mice to, bites you and inflicts those teeth into your skin, it also can inflict the bacteria from its diet. And you can get one hell of an infection. Cats, for example, they have those huge hyperdermic kind of teeth. They pierce your skin, go deep into your muscle. And the bacteria in their saliva is highly infectious. That's uh, Pasturella multicida. And that bacteria, 80% of all cat bites cause infection. I probably see one or two every two months. Uh, dog bites, only 20% of dog bites get infected. Their bite is different and their diet is different. So their bite is more of a compression, ripping, as opposed to the, the fangs of a cat. Iguanas, for example, I've treated probably five or six iguana bites. 
I've never really had a serious infection from them. Why is that? What do they eat? They eat leaves, fruit, um, so flowers. So they're not eating um, material like or animals like mice, rats, and rice. So you have to be aware of the, the animal that bites you. You want to know that animal's diet in terms of whether or not it's, you have a higher risk of an infection or a cellulitis of the skin. So what is the treatment for these? The treatment is you need to wash it with soap and water really, really good. You're in the outdoors. You get bit by a non-venomous snake. You need to irrigate the heck out of it. Clean it really, really well. Bacitracin, bandage, and observe for a couple of days. You'll know within two to three days for sure if it's going to get infected. So you're, if you see redness, uh, basically warmth, if you see something called ascending lymphangitis, and that's where redness is going up your arm or up your leg, that's that red line that you see. People say, oh, you have blood poisoning. So if you see that, or something called lymphadenitis, and that's swollen lymph nodes. You have some lymph nodes in your elbow, you have them under your armpit. If those are tender, then you need to be seen. Go into urgent care, go in the emergency room, and get checked out. Um, other than that, guys, leave the snakes alone. They serve a purpose. No reason to pick them up. Enjoy them from a distance. Take pictures. Enjoy the outdoors. Decrease your chance of getting bit by anything. Just watch it and observe at a distance. Not a big deal. Hey. Next time, we're going to be talking about venomous snakes and what is the treatment out for those in the outdoors. Take care. Keep your eyes on the horizon, your face to the wind. If you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Subscribe. That would be really helpful.